For this 90s sports nostalgia video, I want to take a look at the coaching career of Clem Haskins while at Minnesota. There will be two items that I will mainly focus on. Many of you watching this can probably guess what those items will be. But anyways, to start, Clem Haskins. He had a solid nine-year NBA career, once averaged over 20 points a game in a season, and Haskins returned to his alma mater, Western Kentucky, as an assistant coach. Then he would go on to be the head coach at Western Kentucky after Gene Cady left to go to Purdue. And while in Bowling Green, Kentucky, Haskins guided the Hilltoppers to two NCAA tournament appearances in six years. Enter the 1986-1987 college basketball season, Clem Haskins would be the new Minnesota Golden Gophers basketball coach and be taking over a program that many may say was in shambles. For the first two seasons under Haskins, Minnesota struggled, but in year three, Haskins would make Minnesota be more competitive in a conference with some prestigious programs and very quality coaches. Haskins really held his own in the Big Ten Conference for years to come. Beginning with the 1988-1989 season, Minnesota would reach a Sweet 16, and for the following season, Minnesota would reach the Elite Eight. The main player on this team was Willie Burton, who was one of the best players in Golden Gophers history. Burton was a great college basketball scorer and one of the best Golden Gophers players ever. Then for the next two seasons, Minnesota, they had a couple of losing seasons in terms of Big Ten play, but for the 92-93 season, Minnesota would go 17-10, and cracked the top 25 for a week, but wouldn't make the 64 team NCAA tournament as they were a bubble team that perhaps deserved a spot in the tourney. But with Vashon Leonard, Minnesota won the 1993 NIT. Then for the next two seasons, Haskins and the Gophers would get back to the NCAA tournament, but Minnesota wouldn't be able to get into the second weekend of the tournament. However, the foundation was starting to be built for what would be the best season in school history. From the 1995-1996 season, Vashon Leonard would be gone starting his professional basketball career. In Minnesota, they'd finish regular season at 18-12, 10-8 in the Big Ten, perhaps snubbed once again from the NCAA tournament. Subsequently, the Golden Gophers lost in the second round of the NIT, but basically all those players who made contributions from the 95-96 team would return for the following season. And I also want to mention that Clem Haskins was an assistant coach on the 1996 Dream Team 3 Olympic basketball team. But back to college basketball for the 96-97 season. Minnesota, they begin the season ranked number 22. And this team was so well-rounded. They had a little bit of everything. They had strength inside. They could rebound, score on the inside, shoot from the outside. They had athleticism. They were unselfish. And they could defend. And they took care of the ball. This was such a well-rounded team. A very balanced team. The Golden Gophers had excellent college guards in Bobby Jackson and Eric Harris. Jackson is the most well-known player from this team. The 1997 Big Ten Player of the Year would go on to have a really solid NBA career. Minnesota, they also had Sam Jacobson at small forward, who would later become a late first-round draft pick. And down low, Minnesota, they were tough inside with John Thomas, who would also be a late first-round pick, and sophomore Courtney James, who I thought had the potential to be remembered as the best player from this team after his time as a Golden Gopher, with James's combination of strength and athleticism, along with his rebounding ability. More on Courtney James later on. Lastly, this Minnesota team, they could go about nine deep, as the most well-known bench player was Quincy Lewis, who would also later go on to be a late first-round pick. So, the 1996-1997 Minnesota Golden Gophers, they finished regular season with only three losses, ranked number two, and Haskins was named AP Coach of the Year. For the NCAA Tournament, Minnesota, they won their first two tournament games easily, but endured through a double overtime victory against Clemson and defeated UCLA despite being down by 10 in the second half. Nonetheless, Minnesota, they made their first ever Final Four and would go up against mighty Kentucky. Now in short, Minnesota, they struggled with turnovers. They once had a one point lead with under 11 minutes remaining, but after that, Kentucky, they pulled away with a 78-69 victory. This was the last victory for Rick Pitino as Kentucky's head coach. So, the 1996-1997 Gophers team was the best in school history. Bobby Jackson and John Thomas, they get drafted in the first round for the 97 NBA draft. Courtney James, who I thought had so much potential, was suspended for the entire 97-98 season due to a domestic assault charge. In September of 1997, Gophers basketball coach Clem Haskins announced James would be suspended for playing in any games for the season, but could still practice with the team and return for a senior season. Instead, Courtney James, he left to play professionally in Greece. So, the 97-98 Gophers, they still had Sam Jacobson, 
Quincy Lewis, and Eric Karras. They didn't make the NCAA tournament, but they won another NIT title. Moving forward, the five starters from the 97 Final Four team, they would all move on. So for the 1998-1999 college basketball season, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, they still had Quincy Lewis, who led the Big Ten in scoring at 23.1 points per game, and incoming was one of the nation's top recruits and big man, Joel Prisbilla. Minnesota was ranked for most of the season, made it back to the NCAA tournament as a seventh seed, going up against Gonzaga. But then some crazy news came out. I call it crazy just because of the timing, as it was something strange to experience. A day before the first round game, a report from the Pioneer Press by George Dorman mentioned that a former office manager did academic coursework for at least 20 players. This resulted in four players being suspended hours before the game. Two of those players were starters. Now obviously, this was a huge distraction, especially with the timing. The Gonzaga Bulldogs end up winning, and subsequently, this would be the end of the Clem Haskins era in Minnesota Golden Gophers history. These next items are from an article by Giovanna Del Orto with the Herald Times from June 26, 1999. And the article mentioned that Haskins asserted his innocence, but he stepped down as men's head basketball coach. Clem Haskins, he agreed to a $1.5 million buyout of his contract with Minnesota. Now, even though university investigators found no evidence implicating the basketball coach in an academic fraud scandal, the university president, he said it's extremely likely that fraud did occur and said a change was necessary to restore confidence in the university. Now, another interesting item after the scandal that I'd like to mention has to do with who Minnesota hired after Haskins. So Gonzaga, they defeated Minnesota and made a surprising run to the lead eight in 1999. This was the beginning of what was to come for Gonzaga's program. This victory was the start of Gonzaga becoming a college basketball power. Now, if Minnesota was at full strength and the news of the scandal didn't come out right before that first game, perhaps Minnesota wins that game, but in reality, who knows? But Gonzaga, they had quite the advantage due to Minnesota's academic scandal. But anyways, because of the success of Gonzaga during the 99 NCAA tournament and Clem Haskins stepping down, Dan Munson, who was the coach of the Gonzaga team, then became the new head coach at Minnesota. Mark Few would then replace Munson at Gonzaga, guiding the Bulldogs to 20 plus consecutive tournament appearances. Meanwhile, Munson at Minnesota, he coached seven full seasons and resigned early into his eighth season. He made one NCAA tournament appearance. And nothing against Dan Munson, but it's hard to imagine that he could have been as successful as Mark Few has been with Gonzaga, as although Munson started it, but Mark Few really turned Gonzaga into a national power. When Clem Haskins came to Minnesota in 1986, he was coming to a program that recently had its problems. Haskins was also coming to a program that wasn't rated as highly as other jobs in the Big Ten, was perhaps in the middle of the pack, but furthermore, the Big Ten, they also had some well-known and great coaches. But Clem Haskins, he was able to make the Golden Gophers competitive in the late 80s and 90s that included putting together one of the best Big Ten teams ever in my lifetime in the 1996-1997 Minnesota Golden Gophers team. The Clem Haskins era was one of the best eras in Minnesota Golden Gophers basketball history. The best era since the tournament expanded to 64 teams in 1985. But unfortunately, the way the Clem Haskins era ended was very disappointing. Real quick, I just want to thank all those who have supported 90 Sports Nostalgia. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and check out the links below for Patreon. Thank you so much. A look back at the coaching career of Clem Haskins.